Hi guys, it's Brandon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I post true crime content like this every single week. So if that's something you want to see, then consider subscribing. And today we're going to be talking about the case of Sophie Hook. Before we get started, I need to give a content warning. There are themes of sexual assault and rape and the killing of a child. So if that's something you can't watch, click out now and I'll see you in next week's video. So let's get into the case. <coughs> Sophie Louise Hawke was born on the 27th of May, 19... 88 and was seven years old at the time of this case and she was born in Cheshire in England. In July 1995 Sophie and her family went to Wales to visit some family. They stayed at Sophie's uncle's house which was in Landudno in northern Wales. It was her cousin's birthday and they were all going to celebrate together. On 29th of July 1995 it was a warm summer's day, so Sophie and her cousins were playing in the garden and the paddling pool and they were all in their underwear. The children had decided that that night they wanted to camp out in the garden in a tent and they were planning what they wanted to do that night. At around 12.20am, one of the children decided to go back into the house because they didn't want to sleep in the tent anymore and that left three children outside with one being Sophie. At 12.40, Sophie's uncle checked on the children before going to bed. He also left the back door open in case one of the children wanted to come back into the house or in case they needed the toilet. At 2.30am, Sophie's cousin woke up in the tent and he checked the time. He also checked on the other children and they were both still asleep. This same cousin woke up at 7.15am and realised that Sophie wasn't there anymore. Her stuffed toy was there but her and her sleeping bag had disappeared. The cousin went into the house looking for Sophie, expecting her to be there and he had noticed her sleeping bag was just led on the grass in the garden. He looked around the whole house looking for Sophie but she wasn't anywhere. He then woke up the adults and they all immediately began to panic. They all got up and started searching the surrounding fields and streets and the garden but Sophie was nowhere to be seen. After searching for an hour at 8.20am Sophie's parents reported her missing to the police. At 7.10am before Sophie had even been noticed to be missing her body had been found. A 55 year old man named Jerry Davis had been walking his dogs down the beach in Landudna. So there's a pool like thing built on the beach for young children to swim in when they're too young to swim in the ocean. Jerry was walking past this when he saw a pale bundle next to it. At first he believed it to be a mannequin type thing but when his dogs began to behave oddly he says his dogs were barking, whimpering and running away and he also said that his dogs were well behaved and that they didn't act like this. He, he then went over to this mannequin and realised it was the naked body of a young girl. He described her to be marble white. Jerry then took off his shirt and covered up the young girl's body and then ran to a phone box and called the police. Sophie's body was then taken to the police station for post-mortem to determine the cause of her death as well as identification. Sophie had undergone a brutal death. She sustained a broken upper arm and ankle. She was covered in bruises and she also had internal bleeding as well as being raped and sodomized. It was found that Sophie had sustained all these injuries while she was still alive and they were also compared to that of a major car crash. It was also found that due to being in so much pain Sophie had bitten off the sides of her tongue, the inside of her cheek and the bottom of her lip. The official cause of death was found to be strangulation 
which lasted around three minutes. Her body had also been thrown off a cliff into the sea. The tide was in though, so had washed up her body on, up onto the beach. And this also suggests that the body was thrown in the middle of the night. The news of Sophie's body spread around the town rapidly. And only an hour later, there were loads of witnesses coming forward. Behind the houses where Sophie's uncle lived, there were bushes, there was a bushed alleyway type thing. A footpath, if you will. Several people came forward saying they saw a very tall man with brown hair and a moustache riding his bike up and down this path. A woman walking her dog said she saw this man hiding in the bushes behind Sophie's uncle's house, which is a bit suspicious. This woman confronted the man and he said he had lost some money in the bushes and that he was looking for it. From this path, the man would be able to hear the children planning to sleep in the garden in the tent, so this could have helped him to plan his attack. One person who had seen him on this path was able to identify him as 30-year-old Howard Hughes. Police arrested Howard at his home that he lived in with his mother at around 4pm on the same day that Sophie's body was found. Howard Hughes was a well-respected man in the community. He was a civil engineer and a businessman. Howard was born with a chromosomal abnormality called XYY, which meant that his body produced more testosterone than the average person. When too much testosterone is produced, then this can cause violence and aggression and it caused him to physically mature a lot quicker than normal. At age 11, he was already six foot tall. And when he was a fully grown man, he was six foot eight, which is very tall. In school, Howard had a tough time. He had learning disabilities and was also dyslexic. Also due to his high testosterone levels, he had many behavioural issues. His father tried to send him to a private school to help fix his behaviour, but after only six months of being there, he was kicked out. He was also kicked out of four schools in his life and gave no qualifications. When Howard Hughes was 16 years old, he lured a seven-year-old boy into an abandoned house where he exposed himself to him and made sexual suggestions to this child. Then he tried to strangle this young boy to death. This boy said, quote, He picked me off the ground and threw me down. He was a very strong man. He wound up astride me with both his hands around my neck. This boy survived the attack because he had played dead and Howard had fallen for it, believing he had killed this child. Howard spent two years in a psychiatric hospital for this, but never faced any jail time. By the time Howard Hughes was 19, he had gained over 17 convictions, including burglary, theft, threatening behaviour, possession of weapons and criminal damage. Howard had also been accused of the sexual assault of three young girls, with these girls being aged 5, 3 and 9, and all these charges against him were dropped. Back to the timeline now, Howard had been arrested for the suspicion of the murder of Sophie Hawk. He was held in police custody for four days while evidence was being gathered, but there hardly was any evidence against him. There was no forensic evidence due to the body being thrown off the cliff and into the sea, so all evidence was washed off. On the 3rd of August, the police actually let Howard Hughes free because of lack of evidence against him. All of his technology was seized though when he was arrested and searches were still occurring even though he was let free. Hours after his release, police found indecent images of children on his computer and he was arrested once again. He was charged with the rape, murder and kidnapping of Sophie Hawk. In June of 1996, the trial began. Again, there was no forensic evidence for the prosecution to use against Howard Hughes, but they did have a large number of witnesses. 
One of these witnesses was Gerald Hughes, who was Howard's very own father. Gerald testified saying that Howard had confessed to him of the murders the same day that the murders happened. The next witness was Jonathan Carroll, who said he saw Howard with Sophie. He said he saw him walking down the streets with a big sack on his hands. He, took, he looked at this sack and said it looked like a naked human body. Jonathan was actually prosecuted for coming forward because the only reason he saw Howard with this sack was because he was stealing from somebody's garden. The next witness was a convicted child sex offender named Michael Guidi. Michael and Howard had been friends for years according to Michael and he said that he and Howard had had a conversation a few years back where Howard had said he wanted to rape a girl of four or five years old. In July 1996, Howard Hughes was found guilty of the murder, rape and kidnapping of Sophie Hook. He was given a whole life tariff and three life sentences. This meant he was supposed to never be released, but then he appealed his sentence with moderate success. His sentence was then changed to have a minimum of 50 years to be served in prison, meaning the earliest he can be released is at 80 years old. So that's the end of this case. If you want to subscribe, I'm going to put it over here. If you want to subscribe to my second channel, over here, and I'm going to put a playlist in the middle so you can watch some more videos.